My 24 foot carbol planked Ranger class gaff cutter is up to the stage where I'm fitting the deck beams. The cockpit beams and the beams either side of the mast are cut from solid spotted gum. The others are laminated celery top pine. Each is built up from seven laminations, each a bit over 10 millimetres thick. The curve is determined by constructing a pattern to the detail shown in my book on wooden boat building, as well as just about any other book on boat building. My beams will be tapered from three inches, 76 millimetres, thick in the middle, to two and an eighth, 55 millimetres, at the shear clamp. So I've set the brackets that I'll laminate the beams around to be the shape of the underside of the widest beams. The actual camber or crown on the, of the top of the beam will be marked to a greater curve and cut out. I spread West System Epoxy Resin thickened with microfibers to a brushable consistency on both surfaces to be joined in a stack and then clamp them around the brackets. Once cured and cleaned up, I mark the shape of the beam with the beam mould, the upper edge of which represents the underside of the beam, and the bottom edge of the mould represents the top of the beams or the underside of the deck. The half beams I'm making here are built up from two laminations of one inch celery top pine because I couldn't get any two inch stock. There's lots of different ways to house the beams at each end and they can be quite simple if you're going to glue the deck to the beams. The Ranger class and many other boats built in Australia have wide shear clamps with the beams half dovetailed into them, like on this Clem Masters Dragon. And on the Riddell built Sydney to Hobart yacht race winner, Ripple. I chose to do a stopped half dovetail. If you're going to glue your deck down, this is overkill. But I'm building this boat largely just to enjoy the project and I quite enjoy making these. Here's how I did it. The beams will all be fitted plumb, so I marked out the housing at the correct width and depth. I then chiselled out the shallow part of the housing known as the homelet. You can also do this with a router which I'll show you later. Then I marked out the dovetail housing, about two thirds of the depth of the beam cut the sides, drilled a few holes to the correct depth and chiselled it out. To mark the beam for the correct width across the boat, it's safest to turn it upside down and mark the positions of the homelet and the dovetail onto the beam. Of course, these marks have to be transferred to the other face of the beam when you turn it right way up, squaring them across and then joining them up at the correct angle. Rest the beam right way up immediately above where it is going to live and transfer the angles of the back of the homelet and the back of the dovetail onto the beam. Mark and cut the beam ends. I always cut conservatively and adjust them with trial fits.
In an area that's to be varnished, I prime the beam ends and housing with varnish. If it's a painted area, I prime with paint. I go for a final trial fit, then apply a bedding compound, then drive it home and generally add a fastening. Carlins are four and aft members between beams where cockpits, cabin structures and hatches go. The Ranger has no cabin structure so it has only short carlins in the cockpit and for three hatches on deck. Most boats like Ripple here have longer carlins for the cabin and these require a lot of half beams and some temporary supporting structure. I generally half dovetail the carlins into the beams but because I don't want to take too much meat out of the beam the back of the dovetail is sloped. It's important to be accurate in locating the carlins. They generally are located at the same distance from the centre line. Hatch carlins are almost always fitted plumb. Some cabin carlins may be angled inwards. I routed out the homework but always finished off the edges with a chisel. The bottom of each carlin butts against both beams, so the first mark that you transfer is the distance between the bottom of the beams onto the underside of the carlin. Mark the angle of the slope of the dovetail onto the carlin. And double check every measurement. Because the carlins are square to the beams, every mark that needs transferring from one side to the other can simply be squared across. Like always, I start by cutting conservatively and adjusting the fit with trial fits. I fit half beams with the same dovetails as the full beams into the shear clamp and a sloping dovetail into the carlin. After all the trial fits are done, I prime the ends and the housings and bed it all in for good. I roughly fared the top of the beams and carlins at this stage, even though I won't be fitting the deck until after the interior is finished. I used the beam mould and battens. I'll leave the final tweaking until I'm ready to fit the deck. The same beam mould works on most boats for all the beams aft of the mast. Forward of the mast, if you make all deck beams the same curve, you'll generally find that the centre line of the deck appears to sag in profile. It's safer to lay a long batten along the centre line when all of the beams aft of the mast are in and sight it up for a fair curve. Here's a hint, on most boats it looks best if it's almost straight from a bit forward of the mast to the stem head. The difference between the bottom of the batten and a straight line from gunnel to gunnel at each beam position gives you the camber for that beam and the curve is plotted out individually for each beam. 
The deck structure isn't complete until we've added knees, both hanging knees and lodging knees, and I'll go into this in a future episode. And don't forget to have a look at my book, Wooden Boat Building, the Sydney Wooden Boat School Manual, available direct from www.sydneywoodenboatschool.com.au, anywhere in the world, or from Boat Books in Australia and the Wooden Boat Store in the USA.